Amen. We've been praying for Joe VL as well and believing God. Amen. To touch her and raise her up. Amen. And we thank God. Amen. God is doing his thing. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse number 6. Romans chapter 8, verse number 6 is where we're going. Uh, I believe I'm reading for the King James Version. I think that's what that is. Romans chapter 8, verse number 6. We'll read it from the King James Version. And I'll share a word with you real quickly. Thank you all for praying for me. You, your prayers, God, if y'all only knew what your prayers were doing for me as, a, as, as your pastor, you would be amazed, I tell you. But keep on praying, please. Uh, don't stop praying. Look at somebody say, don't stop praying for your pastor. Amen. Don't stop praying. All right. Um, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, verse number 6, King James Version. And then I'll read it in New Living Translation, too. I, I peeped over at it while I was talking. I think it looks good there, too. But Romans chapter 8, verse number 6, King James Version. Annette, who's directly behind me, I believe, with the microphone, is going to read this scripture for us. Let's hear what the Word of God has to say to us. Romans 8 and 6. For to be carnally minded is death, mm -hmm. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Thank God for his word. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The same scripture in the New Living Translation says, so letting, listen to this, so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting, letting, I want you to catch that word there, but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Everybody say amen. Just in case you're just joining us, we've been in a series of messages that began the first of the month. It's called Mind Games, Mind Games. The purpose of the series is to honestly and openly deal with the warfare that goes on in our head, that goes on in our minds. Um, we looked at a scripture when we first began in the first of the month where Paul, the apostle, says that I have, I have a, 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 another power that's at work within me that's warring against my mind. And Paul said that when I would do good, evil is present with me and, and when I would follow the law and I would do the law then then there's something that's fighting against me doing what I know I ought to be doing and what we have recognized that to be we've recognized that to be the mind game of the devil the devil is always trying to put stuff plant stuff into our head to get us outside to live outside of the will of God and so the purpose of the series is uh, for us to deal with it openly and honestly to to not hide behind titles and act like we don't have this struggle but because all of us have the struggle of dealing with stuff that's in our mind and we've come to realize this we come to realize this that if the devil can control our thoughts he can control our lives okay if he can control our thoughts he can control our lives he will use our mind as a weapon to control us defeat us and devour us and as I said on this morning I don't want the devil controlling my mind because I don't want the devil controlling my life very simple. I don't want the devil controlling my mind because I don't want the devil controlling my life. If the devil is controlling my mind and therefore controlling my life, then he has me, first of all, outside of God's will, doing stuff that displeases God, and then he probably has me on my way to hell. And one thing I don't, and by the way, I know some of y'all don't believe in hell, but I, I believe in hell because it's in the Bible. And what, one of the things that I don't want to do is I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I just don't want to go to hell. Matter of fact, I got saved because I don't want to go to hell. I stay in the church because I don't want to go to hell. I just don't want to go to hell. If y'all want to go, go ahead by yourself, but I just do not want to go to hell. I know, I just know there's no party going on in hell. I just know there's no, and if there is a party going on in hell, it's, it's really going to be a hot one. I don't want to be a part of it, okay? And I'm on my way to heaven, and I'm so glad. So we've been talking about this mind games that the devil has been using to control us. Now, one of the things that, that I know that all of us know, I, I think all of us believe that the devil can control our mind. Everybody believe that? Does everybody believe the devil can control our mind? Is that right? Is that right? The devil can control our mind. Well, I, I, one of the things that I really want to get to is the flip side of this, because if the devil can control our mind, then God can control our mind. Oh, see, you didn't amen that. You didn't amen that, okay? So let me say it to you again. If the devil can control our mind, then God can control our mind. Then the spirit can control our mind. Because, because what we've done throughout the series, and, and, and I know, you know, I'm a part of it as well. You know, when we get to talk about what the devil is doing in our mind and how he's controlling our mind, and I, you know, we are, we are very easy to say, yes, boy, that's true. Oh, my God, the devil. Oh, my mind. Oh, what? My, he, oh, he doing this. He doing that. That's how we do. Come on now. But when we get to the other aspect of understanding that if the devil can do it, then God can do it. Because the devil is not greater than God. 
Uh -huh, come on now. The devil is not greater than God. And so therefore, if the devil can control my mind, then God can control my mind. So what I'm trying to get us to this morning, and I mentioned it at our 8 o'clock service, is what I'm going to be talking about on this afternoon is how to have a spiritual mind. Okay, how to have a spiritual mind because if it's a mind game going on and we got stuff going on and, and we're battling against the devil and I said, as I said on one occasion, if it's a war, anybody can win. Therefore, the spiritual mind, the godly mindset can win and the devil doesn't have to control my mind but God can be in control of my mind. So when I read the scripture out of uh, the New Living Translation, it said this and let me look at it back at again because I, I, really I really didn't plan on reading it. It says, so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death but letting letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace so listen to this we make a decision about what controls our minds huh we let things control our mind if I let the devil control my mind then he'll control my life but if I let God control my mind then he will control my life is anybody hearing me here so we have to let we have to let it control our mind the, the, the choir the choir as they were singing the the choir the the the, uh, the selection that they were singing um, they, they quoted from the scripture out of Philippians that says let this mind which is in Christ Jesus be in you as well and see notice again it's a decision that we make I let the mind of Christ be in me I have to allow it I make a decision whether or not I'm going to operate by the mind of Christ or am I going to operate by the mindset world about by, by the mind set of the world or by the demonic influence that's going on in my mind I have to make that decision so ask somebody what decision have you made what, what decision have you made because you've got to make the right decision about what is going to control your mind so if the devil can control my mind then the spirit can control my mind all right but here it is we have to yield to the spirit's control we have to yield to the spirit's control. We have to yield to it. Not to, don't yield to yourself, yield to the spirit's control. Not to the devil, but yield to the spirit's control. Now, just because we are children of God does not mean that we are spiritually minded people. Well, praise the Lord. Just because we are children of God does not mean that we are spiritually minded people. Just because you are saved does not mean that you are a spiritually minded person. As a matter of fact, the whole book of Corinthians deal with people that are carnal minded. And they are believers just like you are a believer. They were spiritually gifted just like you are spiritually gifted. But, but many times, Paul has to convict them of their sin because they have become very carnal minded. They, they are more concerned about the things of the world than they are the things of God. And Paul begins to tell them, these, these things are not right. Y'all need to get your minds together. Because if you're going to be a child of God, then your mind ought to line up with your heart. Your mind ought to line up with what you say that you are somebody say amen so understand this it takes I need you to hear this it takes a deliberate effort to maintain a godly perspective in a negative world it takes a deliberate effort to maintain a godly mindset in a in a sinful in a negative world somebody ought to say that amen on that okay it takes a deliberate effort because I tell come on let's be honest what's good what if you just spend three hours watching TV and see everything that's happening on whatever you watch, reality or whatever going on. If you just watch it, even the Christian reality stuff, okay, that's so called Christian. Okay, you watch that kind of stuff, it is very hard to maintain a godly mindset when people so just openly sin and have no conviction about what they do. Come on now, can we talk? Can y'all really be honest with it? It takes, it takes a deliberate effort to be different than the world. It takes a deliberate effort to have a different mindset than sinners do because they are very good at advertising what they believe. They are not afraid to tell you what they believe or what or how you should believe just like they believe and how, you know, what they, whatever they do is cool. It's all right. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You can have a wife and a honey. You can have a husband and a whatever. I don't know what y'all call it. Okay, you can have whatever you can. It, they make it seem so cool and so all right that it's hard to maintain a godly mindset while all that's going on. 
Come on now, will y'all just be honest with me? And that's why, that's why we struggle with stuff. That's why we struggle with our mindsets. It's hard for me. One of the things that, that, I, that, that I, I do my best is I try to stay away from, from opinions of people. Because the opinions of people uh, will, will, it, it will sometimes cause your mindset to shift in a way that it shouldn't shift. And one of, the, one of the, the curses of the church is Facebook. Did I say that? Oh, I did. One of the curses of the church is Facebook because people put on there what they're doing and some of the stuff that people are doing and they just so bold about what they're doing and they put on there what they're doing, it will cause you to think, well, maybe ain't nothing wrong with that because that's one of the preachers that go to my church. And if they're doing that kind of stuff, then it must not be anything wrong with me doing it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and so it's hard to maintain this godly perspective in a negative world. It's hard to be spiritually minded in this negative world that we live in, in this sinful world that we live in. And by the way, again, all the sin that I'm talking about is just not sin that they're doing out there. I'm talking about sin that happens in the church. I could say some stuff, and if I say some of the stuff that I say, because I, I believe, I believe, one of the things that I found out about myself, I believe very differently than other people believe. I do. I, I just believe, uh, I, I believe that, that some things that we should not do, I believe that there's something, that, that, that there's certain people that we shouldn't invite to our platforms to speak to us if we are believers. I believe that. I don't believe, see, let me tell you something. This just me. This don't have to be you. This just me. So get ready for me to say what I'm getting ready to say. And when I say it, I ain't say it was God. I said it was me, right? Didn't I say that? I don't believe that you have to invite Oprah Winfrey to come and speak to a body of believers when Oprah Winfrey has openly said that she believes that there are many ways to God and that Jesus is not the only way to get to God. And I don't think that you ought to have a mega fest and have people come and pay to hear Oprah speak to them when Oprah ain't representing Jesus Christ. That's me. That's me. I didn't say that was God. I said that was me. Now, I know that just some upset some of y'all because some of y'all paid y'all money to go hear what she had to say to get in her life class. My life class comes from the Bible. If I want to know anything, I get it from God. And I don't believe that we have to bring unanointed people to our platforms to teach anointed people what they need to do. That's just me. Now, I told y'all. Now, I gave, I gave you a precursor before I said all that. I told you this is me. You ain't got to believe like I believe. You ain't got to think like I think. But that's the way that I think. Because I'm doing everything I can to maintain my godly perspective on things. And if you bring the devil, and the devil, I'm not, did I just call her a devil? No, but I might. If you bring the devil to teach me something, I believe that what he teaches may be true, but there is a spirit behind it as well. And I cannot afford to allow any demonic spirits to attach itself to me. That's just me. That's just me. Look at somebody and say, that's just him. Just tell him. Just want you to know. It takes a deliberate effort to maintain a, a spiritual mindset. When we accept Christ we, and are willing to become his disciples, we have a carnal mind and a spiritual mind going on at the same time. Mm-hmm. Remember, Paul says, when I would do good, evil is right there with me. So we have a spiritual mind and a carnal mind going on at the same time. Our spiritual mind desires to know Jesus. Our spiritual mind desires to seek his word. Our spiritual mind desires to be a true follower. The reason why some of you have a, if you were, an agitation going on within you is because there is a spiritual man within you that wants to know Jesus. And that spiritual man sometimes gets tired of you playing church. And it gets tired of you going through the motions. It gets tired of you just doing what you want to do when you want to do it. And that spiritual man is going, you need to get yourself together. And it pushes you and it, and it, and it primes you and it, and it does all these things in order for you to get to where you need to get to. Has anybody ever had experienced that before? I can remember at, at a time being outside the will of God and that spiritual man on the inside of me just being so uncomfortable. And I can feel him being uncomfortable. And that spiritual mindset, just being so uncomfortable, like you need to get yourself together. Go to church. I'm like, I don't want to go to church. 
Go to church. I don't want to go to church. Go to the altar. I don't want to go to the altar. Get on your face. I don't want to get on your face. Pick up your word. I don't want to pick up, pick up my word. But let me tell you something. Whatever you empower, whether you empower the spiritual man or the carnal man, whatever you empower will become what controls you. I'm almost done. I'm, I can tell I'm boring, y'all. I'll be on vacation in a couple of weeks. Y'all don't have to worry about me. The carnal mind, the carnal mind, on the, on the other hand, the carnal mind thinks of worldly things, sin, suicide, anger, depression, lust, rebellion, disobedience, and the carnal mind is an enemy against God. So if our mind is not focused on Christ, then we cannot have life in peace. Remember a couple of weeks ago, he that keeps his mind stayed on, on, on Christ, on God, on the Lord, he shall have perfect peace. Okay, so our mind has to be focused on peace. And so to get out of the, the carnal mindset, we've been talking about uh, how we should cast down the imaginations and, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And we need to bring into captivity every thought uh-huh into the obedience of Christ and there's another scripture that if I can just take a little further and we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind okay everybody in here when you get saved you need to get your mind transformed renewed washed okay you need to get your mind renewed and washed so so let's look at Romans chapter 12 verse number two I, I'm just about done y'all I didn't mean to bore y'all this long um Romans chapter 12 verse number two um, New Living Translation, and that you, you read it for me so I can get me some water because I'm getting no amens, and that's just gonna make me preach longer, so I need to fuel up. <laughs> Romans 12 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, uh huh. But let God transform you, but let God transform into you a new person, into a new person by changing the way by you think, changing the way you think. Read. Then you will learn to know then you will God's learn to, will for you, uh -huh. which is good and pleasing and perfect. Okay, so notice what it says. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. You are not supposed to think like you used to think. Let me tell you something. There is nothing wrong with you. I know what you're thinking. There's something wrong with me. I'm not thinking the way I used to think. I'm not thinking, what's wrong with me? I used to, I used to want to do this and I used to want to do that. I used to want to go to the club. I used to want to do, I want to, I want to drink all night. I wanted to, I want to cuss people out. I wanted to do that. And you start thinking, well, maybe there's something wrong with me. No, there's nothing wrong with you. You were supposed to change when you got saved. There's nothing wrong with you. I know you think there's something wrong with you wanting to be in church. There is nothing wrong with that. You're supposed to want to be in church. Why? Because God has transformed you. He has changed the way that you think. The next time you walk away from somebody when you would have cussed them out, you ain't got to walk away and say, man, there might be something wrong with me now. Well, a... No, there's something right with you now. Did you hear me? There's something right with you now. You've been transformed. You're not supposed to think the same way that you thought. Thank God for your transformation. As a matter of fact, when you're in, in front of them and you know you used to cuss them out and you don't cuss them out and you walk away, you ought to just throw a little of that in there and go, thank you, Jesus. God's changed the way I've been thinking. I'm not thinking the same way anymore. I'm not thinking about how I'm going to get back at somebody anymore. I'm not thinking about how I'm going to do somebody wrong anymore. I'm not thinking about what. That's what he does, y'all. He changes us so that we can think different. If you're thinking the same, I question your salvation. If you're thinking the same way that you thought when you were a hood on the street, you think in the same way, I question your salvation. Because there are there should have been a change. This is a part of how we become spiritually minded. We become renewed. He makes our minds new. God must transform us into a new person. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new, y'all. This is a part of the of the heritage of the believer, is that we become new people with new minds. And that mind is controlled by Jesus. This is good news. 
Y'all ain't acting like it's good news, but it's good news. You act like the news that I gave you about the negative mindset was good news. No, the good news is you have a new mind. And the old stuff does not come into your new mind. Thank you, Jesus. This is part of how we become spiritual. One of the ways of defeating the devil is by knowing these things. You got to know you got a new mind. You got to know, first of all, you got to walk around and understand, hey, wait a minute, I'm a new person. I got a new mind. Come on, everybody say, I'm a new person. I have a new mind. Say it again. I am a new person. I have a new mind. Okay, now check this out. That's one of the ways of defeating the devil. I'm a new person with a new mind. Matter of fact, let me show you the scripture in 1 Corinthians 2, 16. Go there. Go there. I, I may have too many scriptures today, but I, I need to get some of these. 1 Corinthians 2, 16. This is an amazing, this is one of the most amazing scriptures of the 10,000 or so scriptures that I really think are amazing. This is one of the most amazing scriptures right here. 1 Corinthians 2, 16. Check this out. Lord have mercy. Read this for me, Annette. New Living. For, for who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? Who knows enough to teach him? But check this out. But we understand these things. But we understand these things. For we have, for we the, have mind the, the mind of Christ. Did you? Maybe you missed that. You got the mind of Christ. No, 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 no. You're missing it. You have the mind of Christ. This is a New Testament revelation. In the Old Testament, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Now in the New Testament, he tells us, now you got my mind. In other words, you have the capacity to think just like I think. I got the mind of Christ. I got the mind of Christ. I think like Christ thinks. Whatever Christ thinks about it, I think about it because I got the mind of Christ. I'm a new person with a new mind. So let's go, let's go, let's, this morning I talked, this morning I talked about um, um, Eve and how Eve was confronted with the devil. I call that one of the classic confrontations of, of the mind game, okay, where, where, the, where the devil confronts Eve and, and comes up against her and, you know, the things that he does, to, you know, about eating the, eating the fruit off the tree. Y'all know that story, don't y'all? If you don't, check it out in Genesis chapter 3. But there's a New Testament story of when, when that Jesus is really facing an Eve situation. He, he's in the wilderness and, and, and the devil comes up to him and begins to say something stuff to him you know you know if you be the son of God turn these these stones into bread if you're the son of God cast yourself off of this pinnacle and and let the angels catch you come on y'all know this story well well Jesus didn't do what Eve did you hear what I said Jesus didn't do what Eve did Eve fell to the temptation Jesus didn't fall to the te temptation I don't have an Eve mind. I've got a Jesus mind. I've got the mind of Christ. Therefore, if I got the mind of Christ, I handle every situation like Christ would have handled. See, I can't free y'all. I can't free y'all. Can I free you? Come on and say, I have the mind of Christ. Man, that's, that's so liberating right there. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not confused. I got the mind of Christ. Wait a minute. I don't know what, I'm not confused. Talking about I don't know what to do. Yeah, I do. I have the mind of Christ. Wait a minute. He can't put more in my mind than I can deal with it because there was nothing that he could put in Christ's mind that Christ couldn't deal with because every time they tried to trap Christ, his mind was so sharp that he was able to get out of it. Man, y'all don't read your Bible. Check this out. They, remember this story? They, there's a woman that they caught in adultery. They call it in adultery. They bring her to Christ. And the Bible said that the reason why they brought her to Christ is, is that they were trying to trick him with something. So they brought, they brought the woman to him and said, that this is what the law says. The law says, he that is without sin cast the first stone. Now, they knew that, that Jesus, was, number one, came to fulfill the law. But they knew, number two, that Jesus wasn't about killing people. So they're like, now, how are you going to get out of this? Well, let me tell you how Jesus got out of it. Jesus began to stoop down on the ground. Began to, come on, come on, Sunday school people. He began to write on the ground, and then he looked up and said, He that is without sin cast the first stone. Now, let me tell you how wise this was what he said. The Bible says that they begin to depart from the oldest to the youngest. In other words, see, the older people have more wisdom than younger people. 
You should have amen that, but I'm going to keep moving. Older people have more wisdom than younger people. The older people automatically recognize, well, we can't do nothing with that. The young folks stuck around. They were like, huh, did he just bust us? Did, did, did he just put us on blast like that? And then they figured it out. They were like, well, we better leave too. I got that same mind. You have that same mind that when the devil tries to back you into a corner or when situations and things try to back you into a corner, you got to remember, hold up. I know how to get out of this. I got the mind of Christ and I'm going to engage that mind to get out of this. Come on, everybody say, I have the mind of Christ. Isn't that liberating? That's just so liberating. Let me hurt and move on. So I got the mind of Christ and therefore it's easy to become spiritual minded because I have the mind of Christ. It's easy. It's not hard. I have the mind of Christ. So it's easy to become liberated. Give me a couple more minutes, okay? So I also begin to ask God, okay, God, this spiritual minded, I want to continue to be spiritual minded. He says, well, to be spiritual minded, you got to understand what the spirit thinks. Well, that makes sense. If I'm going to be spiritually minded and I'm going to think like the spirit thinks, I need to know what the spirit thinks. So let's go to John 16 and 13. This is good preaching, Ernest. I appreciate you preaching on that. John 16, 13. Don't worry, next month they're just going to be preaching about anything and everything, and you'll be able to holler, shout, run, glory, God, dance. Yeah, they be preaching all kinds of stuff. John 16, 13. John 16, 13. And 14. And then I think we'll do King James Version, just to keep them on their toes. I mean, they bought them iPads and stuff. They might well use them. John 16, 13, and 14. King James Version. Check this out. Let's see what the Spirit is thinking. Read. How be it? How be it? When he, when he, the spirit of truth is come, the spirit of truth, uh huh. He will guide you into all truth. He's gonna guide you all, all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Now, this is the part that really caught my attention. For he shall not speak of himself. Read. But whatsoever he shall hear, uh -huh. that shall he speak. Uh huh. And he will show you things to come. One more verse. Read. He shall glorify me. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine. He re shall receive of mine. And shall show it unto you. And shall show it unto you. So when I read that, I was like, okay, God, I, I see here the spirit that when the spirit is come because y'all know Jesus was going away he was telling them that I'm going to send you the, another comforter and this going to be the spirit and he was telling them that when the spirit will come the first thing he's going to do is he's going to guide us into all truth thank God for the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit that guides us into the truth you can't go wrong when you listen to the Holy Ghost that was a good message Okay, you can't go wrong when you listen to the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost will guide you into all truth. Then it says this. This caught my attention. He shall not speak of himself. So the Holy Ghost is not coming to glorify himself. He's not coming to talk about himself. He's going to speak about, he says here, whatsoever he hears in heaven or whatsoever he hears, he's going to speak and he's going to show you things to come. Okay, I don't really want to get caught into all that, so I'm, I'm kind of moving quickly. Then it says this. He shall glorify me. In other words, when I looked at that, when I read this, the Lord said to me that the Spirit of God is crazy about Jesus. You missed what I just now said. So I said that. When I read this, the Lord said to me, he said that the Spirit of God is crazy about Jesus. He's going to glorify me. Everything that the Spirit does glorifies Jesus because the Spirit of God is crazy about Jesus. The Spirit of God just is in love with Jesus, just excited about Jesus, just is crazy about Jesus. So that's why when you try to do something contrary to Jesus, the Spirit of God will direct you right back to Jesus. Because the Spirit of God is crazy about Jesus. Now, I said, okay, God, I got that. He said, I got that. So he says, listen to this. He says, okay, well, if the Spirit of the Lord is crazy about Jesus and we have a spiritual mind, then we ought to have a mind that's crazy about Jesus. Okay, get no amens now. We ought to have a mind that's crazy about Jesus. We ought to have a mind that's totally committed and devoted to Jesus. We ought to have a mind that's always thinking about Jesus. We ought to have a mind that, that, shouldn't, that shouldn't hours go through without us thinking about Jesus sooner or later. Why? Because our spiritual mind is crazy about Jesus. Uh-huh. Now, as I'm preaching this, I can tell that this ain't really what you want to hear because none of us really want to be crazy about Jesus. We don't want to be called, we don't want to be called 
we don't want to be called out as one of them Jesus people that ain't doing nothing but talking about Jesus all the time. You don't never had nothing to talk about but Jesus, do you? Why every time, why every time we bring up something, sooner or later you bring up Jesus? Why, why, why all the time, you, you know, we talk about something, you, you start bringing up Jesus, talking about how Jesus can do this and how Jesus can do that and how Jesus can bring you out and how Jesus can deliver you and how Jesus, well, let me tell you why, because I'm crazy about Jesus. And, and I believe, I believe that one of one of the tricks of the enemy in my in in the mind that he's done with believers is now that he has called us to stop talking about Jesus as much as we should talk about Jesus. We talk about the football game more than we talk about Jesus. We 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 talk about we talk about the reality show more than we talk about Jesus. We talk about scandal more than we talk about Jesus. We talk. Uh huh. Yeah, we crazy about scandal, but we ain't crazy about Jesus. Y'all don't want me to preach, but I'm gonna preach anyway. We we crazy. We crazy about the game, but we ain't crazy about Jesus. We are crazy about the housewives of Atlanta, but we ain't crazy about Jesus. I believe that if we're crazy about Jesus, that we will talk about Jesus more than we talk about other things. Thank you for my seven hand claps. I believe that we ought to begin because we have a spiritual mindset to be crazy about Jesus and talk about Jesus. Well, what we have done is that we've allowed the world to decide how much we should talk about Jesus. We've allowed them to dictate. We don't like you talking about all that Jesus. That's because every time we talk about Jesus, to, I'm getting ready to tell you something I need you to hear. Every time we talk about Jesus, somebody gets convicted. <laughs> because you can't talk about Jesus and somebody not be affected by the Jesus that you talk about. That's why, y'all, we got to get rid of get a spiritual mind and not be ashamed to talk about Jesus. I'm sorry if I bring him, at, bring him up at the most inopportune times, but I got to talk about him because if I talk about him, he'll change our atmosphere. If I talk about him, he'll change our environment. If I talk about him, he'll change everything that we are dealing with. Look at somebody say, we need to talk about Jesus. Okay, y'all be seated. Y'all making me nervous. So what am I saying to you? What am I saying to you? Am I saying to you that I want you to become a weird person? That the only thing that come out your mouth, Jesus? I might be. What's wrong with that anyway? Ain't nothing wrong with that. I get around people and they talk about the same stuff all the time. The same stuff all the time. They always, they always want to tell me what they did and who they did it with and all the same stuff all the time. Well, if you can, if you can open your mouth and, and put your trash in me, I can open my mouth and put my Jesus in you. Let me move on. Let me move on. The spiritual mind is a mind that thinks about Jesus. Now, one of the things, one of the aspects of this thinking about Jesus is that every thought that a spiritual mind has considers Jesus. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh oh, the spiritual mind thinks about Jesus, which means that every thought that a spiritual mind has considers Jesus. Remember that the spirit comes to glorify Jesus. So my thought that I just now had, if it does not glorify Jesus, then I shouldn't have that thought. You filter your thoughts, your thoughts through Jesus. So if you're thinking about something and trying to figure out whether or not it is a godly thought or an ungodly thought, then filter it through Jesus. Does it glorify Jesus? The fact that you just cussed them out, does it glorify Jesus? The fact that you just slashed their tires, does it glorify Jesus? The fact that you just, as a minister of the gospel, slept in fornication with somebody that's not your husband or your wife, does it glorify Jesus? If it does not glorify Jesus, then it did not come out of your spiritual mindset. Why, why y'all don't want to talk to me? Y'all want to talk to me about this? Stuff. Huh? If what you just now said about somebody doesn't glorify Jesus then maybe it wasn't a spiritual thought and you didn't consider Jesus before you said what you said and allowed that thought to stay in your head boy this is the best preaching I've done since the 11 o'clock service started today I'm trying to tell y'all it filters every thought through Jesus does it glorify Jesus in any way does my sin glorify Jesus my sin. I'm getting, ready to, I'm getting ready to turn on my computer and watch pornography. Does this glorify Jesus? Is he getting ready to be praised 
because of what I do. If, if he's not getting ready to be praised for me watching these two people doing what they're doing, then, then it's not coming out of a spiritual mindset. Well, don't nobody want to talk to me now. Does this music do, that I listen to, is he receiving the glory out of some, some gold tooth rapper calling some woman out of her name? Does that glorify Jesus in any way? And does he get any glory out of allowing that thought to get into my mind? We don't want to talk about this stuff, huh? Does that glorify Jesus? Does, does that glorify Jesus? That's the question. Does it glorify Jesus? Every thought in the spiritual mindset will glorify Jesus. The way the thoughts that I think of how I'm going to treat you will glorify Jesus. How I speak to you, the thoughts that I think will glorify Jesus. What I do in my life, they will glorify Jesus. Boy, I said Jesus too much in this message. I can tell. Y'all are, are uncomfortable. <laughs> Does it glorify Jesus? To have the mindset of Christ is to glorify Jesus. Next, next the thing about having the mindset of Christ. To have the mindset, the, 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 the spiritual mindset, is to say that the Spirit has the permission to shape my mind attitude set. Okay, a mind now by, by mind attitude set, what I mean is that not only is this about your mind, it's also about your attitude. And the spirit does not just want to shape your mind, he wants to shape your attitude. Okay, and so when you have a spiritual mindset, you allow the spirit to shape your mind attitude set according to his own. In other words, whatever his is, mine becomes. My mind becomes what's in his mind. Remember, remember back in the day, we had those bands on, and we had T-shirts on that had the WWJD on. Remember that? And that was what would Jesus do? Well, what that was all about was shaping our mindsets to do what Jesus would do in a particular situation. I think we might need to go back to some of them shirts, but that's just me talking. Okay? All right. Now, let me show you one, one more thing, and I'm going to be done. I can tell you all ready to go. Um, the spiritual mind is governed by the Spirit of God. The spiritual mind is governed by the Spirit of God. This is what the Scripture says in Romans 8 and 14. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So can I put it this way? If you are not led by the Spirit of God, then you're not a child of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children, the sons of God. So if you will not allow God to lead you, then you don't want to be his son or his child. I, 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 get, I, give this, uh, I give this illustration. I don't give it um, um, with arrogance or anything. I just, I just give the illustration. Um, I had someone that was coming to our church, and, and I had been talking to them and ministering to them and telling them what they need to do and how they need to live, and they just utterly just disrespected me and did what they wanted to do. Now, you know how folk run around here call me dad, and, you know, I'm a son in the ministry and a daughter of the ministry and all that kind of stuff. It sounds good. It sounds real good when you do that. Okay, uh, but, and so, so they were, you know, one, one of those crew and all that kind of stuff. And, and so what happened was they needed me to sign some paperwork for them to do something because they needed a pastoral uh, endorsement. Well, I said to them, I'm not going to sign it because you live in disobedience toward me, and now you want me to be a spiritual father and sign something for you. I told him this, I don't even feel like I'm your pastor because you don't want to obey me. Now go ahead, put me on your prayer list and say he shouldn't have done that. He shouldn't have done that. I understand that's how you feel, but I feel differently. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If they're not being led by the Spirit of God, God has no obligation to do for, for them what he could do for a son. And so, therefore, I don't have any obligation to do for somebody that, that claims to be a son of the ministry. I don't have an obligation to do for them what I would do for somebody that's a son of the ministry. Y'all don't like my teaching or preaching, whatever I'm doing. You may not like it, but that's the truth. Okay? And so the Lord says, listen, if you're going, if you're going to be my son, you got to be led by my spirit. Okay, check this out. Since you don't believe that, check this out. Jesus was hanging out with the disciples and followers one day, and he asked this question. And I always like to ask this question because it's a very valuable question. He said to them, he said, hey, can I ask y'all a question? He didn't say it like this. I'm just, this is just my version of it. He said, hey, can I ask y'all a question? They're like, what is it, Jesus? He said, why do y'all call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? Why, why, why do you call me Lord? Why do you come to church, Jesus, Savior, Lord, and you don't do what I say? I can't possibly be your Lord 
if you're not going to do what I say. If you're not going to obey me, if you're not going to live for me, if you're not going to change your mindset and have a spiritual mindset, why do you keep calling me Lord? Why do you keep telling people you belong to me? Why do you keep telling people you saved? Why do you keep telling people you born again? Why do you keep telling people about the church? Why do you keep talking about it and you ain't going to do what I say? Why do you keep talking about it? You're not going to do what I say. Why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord? And so understand this. If we're going to have the spiritual mindset, we have to allow the Spirit of God to lead us. If we're going to have the spiritual mindset, we have to allow the Spirit of God to lead us. So there are four things that we have to do to keep the spiritual mindset. Okay? Four things we have to do to keep the spiritual mindset, and I'm done. Number one, we got to read, study, and meditate upon the Word. We got to read, study, and meditate upon the Word. If you want to keep a spiritual mind, you got to put spiritual thoughts into your head. There are no greater spiritual thoughts than the Word of God. Okay? You got to read it, you got to study it, you got to meditate on it. Meditate on it. Sometimes after you finish reading the Word, li listen to me, listen to me. Um, I have nothing against reading through the Bible in a year. Go ahead and do that. Read through the Bible seven times if you want to. I have nothing against it, okay? But I know too many people that have read through the Bible seven times and don't know nothing in the Bible. I would rather for you to read one scripture, study one scripture, and then get in your car and meditate on that scripture while you're riding. What, what it, when you go do something, just start meditating on that scripture, what it means, how it applies to you, how you can use it in your life, how you can use it against the attacks that are going on in your life. you got to meditate on the word of God and stop allowing people to bring you into condemnation because you ain't read as much as they read. It's not about how much you read. It's about how much you know, what you meditated on. And if you don't, you got you to gotta read it, you got to study it, you got to meditate on it. Because when you meditate on it, it becomes word that's in your mind. It transforms and renews your mind. It keeps your mind spiritually grounded in the things of God. Am I helping anybody at all? Okay, so you got to read, study, and meditate upon the word. Number two, you got to pray in the spirit. You got to pray in the spirit. This is very important. To keep yourself spiritually minded, you got to pray in the spirit. You got to pray in the spirit. Now, if you don't know how to pray in the spirit, let me stop it. Pray. Okay? You got to pray. Okay? You got to pray. You got to stay on your face before God. Here's what I know about myself. I'm prone to do anything. And if I don't keep myself before God in prayer and supplication, then I'll mess up some stuff. So I got to pray. Now, I've been, I've, been, I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And so in being filled with the Holy Spirit, there's a help that comes along. That The Bible says that we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit helps our infirmities in praying with us and through us. And so, therefore, I can pray in the Spirit. And some of you need to learn how to pray in the Spirit because it keeps you spiritually minded. I found this out. I cannot pray in the Spirit and get up and cuss somebody out. I cannot pray in the Spirit and get up and act a fool. I cannot pray. As a matter of fact, if you pray in the spirit, it'll make you do what something, something right that you don't even want to do right. I don't know if you ever had this, man. You pray in the spirit in the church and you finish praying, man, you go over and hug people that you don't even like. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what praying in the spirit will make you do. Praying in the spirit will make you go in your pocket and give somebody $25 and you don't even like them. But the spirit will make you do some stuff like that. Y'all don't want me to teach y'all, yeah? Pray, yeah. That's why you got to pray in the Spirit. It'll keep you spiritually minded. Pray in the Spirit. When you're thinking about doing something wrong, start praying in the Spirit. You think about laying down with somebody you know you ain't supposed to be laying down, stop praying in the Spirit. Just stop praying in the Spirit. Just stop praying. I guarantee you. I guarantee you it'll go away. That's why I teach young people that are in, that are in relationships. I tell them, let's, let's start every relationship with prayer. You single people, start every. See, y'all didn't like that, didn't you? Start every relationship with prayer. When y'all meet each other, they say, okay, before we start, we're going to pray. <laughs> I bet that flesh won't be able to rise up like it want to rise up then. They'll be like, dog, we got to pray. Yeah, we're going to start this thing with prayer. Yeah, we get ready to watch this movie in my living room, but we're going to start it with prayer. Because cause I don't know, it might be a little flesh in there where we were, that we, were, where we didn't expect. So we need God to keep our minds in our hearts. Ain't nobody saying amen to me right now. That's how you got to do it. You pray in the spirit. I dare you to pray in the spirit. So I'm speaking in tongues before you start that thing. All right, now put the movie in. <laughs> yeah. 
See what, see what happened. Pray in the spirit. Number three, number three, you got to fellowship with other believers. You got to fellowship with other believers. I put this on the list because I believe it would be very important. We've got to learn how to fellowship with other believers to keep our minds spiritually settled. Because I need to get around other people that think like I think that think Jesus like I think Jesus, that think Holy Ghost like I think Holy Ghost, that think holiness like I think holiness, that think righteousness like I think righteousness. As Elder Bonner said, now, now, it's not saying that we never get around other unbelievers and stuff like that, but I cannot exclusively spend my time around other unbelievers. I got to get around some people that think like I think so that when I'm around those unbelievers, I can keep a sound mind. So I got a fellowship with other believers. I believe that one of the things that the devil has done, and I need to just say this, one of the things that the devil has done in this mindset game is that he has called, it used to be, now this is me, I, I hate sounding antiquated and so old all the time, but it, but it used to be that when believers came together, you couldn't go to nobody's house without either having prayer or Bible study sooner or later if you met as believers. I'm talking about you went over there for Sunday dinner. I mean, the dinner was good, but I'm going to tell you, in about, in about an hour or so after dinner, when we're sitting around, somebody going to bring up something about Jesus, and we're going to start having Bible study. And I remember folk getting filled with the Holy Ghost in living rooms because we start talking about Jesus and how he can feel and how he can deliver and all that kind of stuff. And I believe that the devil has taken that out of the church. And when we don't feel comfortable with believers coming together and saying, hey, let's talk about the Bible. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about the goodness of God. When now, only thing that we want to do is play spades. Why y'all don't want me to talk? I talk real stuff. I ain't, I ain't scared to go talk to anything. We want to we wanna play spades for two hours, and then after it's over, we gone. Why didn't we take time to bring up Jesus? Why didn't we take time to pray for one another and talk about the goodness of the Lord? And I believe the devil has taken that out of the church. I believe it ought to come back to the church. Boy, you should see how many people are mad at me right now. Boy, you ought to see how many people look like they want to throw something at me right now. Throw it at me, boy. I can do like George Bush. I'll duck. Oh, yeah, I know how to do it. When we fellowship with other believers, we cannot diminish the importance of the time. We cannot diminish the importance of the time of being around other believers. The Bible says this, iron sharpeneth iron. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Iron sharpeneth iron. And if you're right in the midst of iron and you're not sharpening each other, then you're doing each other a disservice. So we got to fellowship with other, other believers Then the fourth thing that we ought to do in order to be, keep spiritual in the mind is we got to share the word. Share the word. Share it with other people. Share your testimony. Share the word. It'll keep you spiritually minded. You know how it keeps you spiritually minded? Because if you share the word with other people about how great God is to you and what God's been doing for you and all these things that the scripture says, you cannot afford to live an ungodly lifestyle around those people you've been sharing the word of God with. So start sharing the word. Don't be ashamed. Share it. Tell people about the word. Give them the word of God, and that, that will help keep you in the spiritual mindset. I'm done. Give the Lord a praise. Stand with me, everybody. Stand with me. Stand with me. As I said on this morning, I said on this afternoon, I'm not going to have an altar call for people to come to the altar. Because I know that the message that I pro preach at 8 and the one I just now preach is for Lottie Dottie and everybody. And so we have no need to come up here to the altar. We all at the altar right now. And here's what I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray, Lord, help us to keep the spiritual mindset. Because if I can keep that spiritual mindset, I won't find myself in any trouble. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you've given me the opportunity to share your word with your people. I thank you, Lord, that we are new people with a new mind. We are new people with a new mind. This is the knowledge that defeats the devil. We have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. We have the mind of Christ. And this mind, this spiritual mind, is a mind 